Okay, great. Now, let me ask this, just in case, um, for just for clarification. What is Africana Studies? You, African American Studies, Black History, Afri uh, what exactly, how would you classify or how would you describe um, Africana Studies? Is it different than Black History? Is it, or are you saying it's all encompassing, which includes areas outside of <coughs> one particular central point. Before he opens his mouth, what would you think Sammy Sosa was? I mean, before the skin change. Right, 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 right. <laughs> well, even then, he, uh... I mean, but, you he, know... He you changed just, the color, but the features just... You know, isn't that the through. truth? That just, they, they, they yeah, look yeah, worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, but before, you, before he would open his mouth, what would you have called it? And then he opens his mouth, baseball been very, very good to me. Whatever he was trying to say, whatever what accent was, we know what he would have been called externally. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's part of reality. Mm -hmm. But I, little story. One day when I was in graduate school, I was visiting a former student of mine from Omaha, lived on Lower Avenue B in New York City, and we were walking down the street, and a five-year-old child, who I think was probably of Puerto Rican descent, whatever that means, mm -hmm. looked at us both and called us niggers. Mm -hmm. Five, if you're old enough to say that, then you're old enough to get a history lesson. Mm -hmm. And I had to explain to him right then and there where he came from and why he was talking bad about himself. Mm -hmm. Our studies, Africana, black, whatever, Afro-American, whatever the term was that they labeled and put it on the, on, on the sign in front of the building at that time, was always global. But because of political issues in the 1960s, it was a stretch to get us to call ourselves black anything. Mm -hmm. But it has never been anything but global. We have yeah. never lost our link with Africa. Right. When he, uh, the man just, he nailed it. The, we have to use different concepts, periods, and but we've never been disconnected mm -hmm. from where we came from, either in our language, our religion, our gestures, or going back and forth. Somebody was always going back over there mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So to me, whatever's the most inclusive term possible, that's what it's supposed to mean. But we've never really been categorized and limited by somebody's title of the thing. That's, that's my opinion. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, here, here's the thing. In, in, in the most general way, when I agree completely, right? But I think that we've got to also begin to tease some things apart right? so that generally when we say African-American studies, mm -hmm. and this is not always the case, right? Uh, but generally when we say African-American studies, we expect that we're going to enter into uh, a curriculum that predominantly emphasizes people who are the descendants of Africans who were enslaved in what became the United States, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, African diaspora studies has tended to be a field which has focused on blacks in the Caribbean and sometimes, right, sometimes, I should say blacks in the Caribbean and blacks in Canada and, and England and sometimes blacks in South and Central America. But it has always excluded Africa and blacks in the U.S., oh, no. right? Um, Africana has been more inclusive, mm -hmm. but at, at but even within these things, we, we've got to also focus on some. So when you say it's always been global, African American studies that focuses on African Americans has always been global because it's always looked right. It's had a Pan African vision mm -hmm. in terms of where liberation will come, and also in terms of understanding culture. So in that sense, it's always been broad and not narrow, right? Um, but we can't focus simply on the global because we have to tell the story from a vantage point. So when I say African-American studies, I mean telling the story from the interests, right, the experiences, the interests, and the perspectives of African-American people. So, for example, we know now that in the U.S. we've got uh, Africans from the continent, they're a growing percentage of the population. We've got Africans from every uh, place in the Caribbean, da 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 da. And we have the traditional African American population. 
Now, while we are indeed a common people, we are also people with very different social historical experiences. I'm going to call them racial formations. Okay. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. The African American racial formation has been one which occurred in the what would become the dominant society, right, after World War I, mm -hmm. right? The United States, the dominant capitalist world economy. And it's been an industrial economy that has now morphed into an information age. People who come out of the Caribbean, they were a majority population always, mm -hmm. right? But a rural political economy, a com uh, continued political economy vested in uh, cash crop production, um, not highly uh, industrialized societies, mm -hmm. right? Continent of Africa, similar, extracted, uh, the Europeans simply extracted mineral wealth. Uh, and so those political economies create a condition under which certain types of different cultures emerge and different social relations emerge so that when people from the Caribbean come here, they are treated somewhat different mm -hmm. initially as long as they can hear the, right, they got to speak. You're right. They got to speak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Africans who come here, the, the, the most educated single group in the U.S., the most educated identifiable group are continental Africans living in the United States. Mm -hmm. You find a continental African in the U.S. and you found somebody with a Ph.D. Worst case scenario, a master's degree. Mm -hmm. They might be driving a cab, but they represent the bourgeoisie. Right? The leadership class on the continent of Africa. Okay? Very different experience. African American people, despite what you might read, about 95% of all African Americans are working class people. Okay? Different social historical experience. And those things lead to different political perspectives and different political agendas. Our task, right? It's not to wait for the second and third generation of Africans and Caribbeans in the U.S. to become African-Americanized, because the good thing we know about America, it's a deeply racist society, and by the second generation, those children of African and Caribbean immigrants will begin to think and act like African-Americans, because they're going to be called the N-word, and they're going to be mistreated and abused. That will always occur, because this is the United States of America, a deeply racist society. But we can't wait for that process. We have to begin to interact more so that we can strengthen the process of political unity. So we've got to be clear about these differences oh, that are there while we work to overcome them. Mm -hmm. We can't deny them. We've got to work to overcome them. Amen.